Good afternoon, boys and girls. And look, look, this is a one followed by two zeros. We are at episode 100 of Love at First Scent. With me, Persilay, is coming to you today from YouTube. As always, I have to get the usual things out of the way. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Hearts, thumbs up, likes, etc., etc. All of those things are very, very welcome. I would also ideally love to spend a lot of time, or a significant amount of time, thanking you very, very much indeed for all of your support in helping me to get to episode 100. So even though my thanks are going to be brief, that doesn't mean that they are not sincere and heartfelt, but I, I want to keep them brief because I'd like to actually get onto the main subject of this anniversary interview, this 100th um, uh, anniversary episode, 100th episode of Love at First Scent. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all of the support. Here's to the next 100, here's to the next 1,000. Now, we have got a live interview for you today that I know you, so many people are very excited about. I'm just going to go onto the tablet to make sure that everything is coming through fine. We've already got some comments coming through. A little bit of housekeeping. You know when you go to a seminar or a meeting or something and say, they, they, these are, this is where the toilets are, this is where the fire exits are. My little housekeeping announcement is going to be about technology. We are very much at the mercy of technology here. My internet connection, the internet connection of the person who has very kindly given up his time to be interviewed by me. If things should happen and driving the creative direction of one of the most beloved brands in the world, um, you may have guess what brand it is because of course it is none other than Amouage. Uh, those of you who watch these episodes regularly will be well aware that the last creative director of Amouage, Christopher Chong, left last year after having been at the brand for a very long time and taken it really from strength to strength and given it some of its best releases. So when the news of his replacement, does he consider himself to be a replacement? We, we can ask him. When the news of his replacement arrived, obviously there was a lot of curiosity about what he would be like, what he would bring to the brand, and now he is here to tell us himself, and I'm sure you've got lots of questions as well. Save the questions, because if you type them out now, then I will miss them. I will tell you when it's okay to go with the questions, but I think we need to go and say hello to him. So thank you very much for joining us. The new creator... Congratulations for uh, 100 episodes, uh, and thank you for hosting me for, uh, for that special day. Not at all. Thank you. It's a, it's a real honor and a real pleasure for, for us to be able to be able, for me to be able to host you on this special episode. Um, how are things in Muscat and has air conditioning become your new best friend? Yes. Um, yeah, definitely air conditioning. And my office is actually quite cold. Um, so that's why um, it, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with um, the difference of temperatures and so on. Um, the situation in Muscat is um, we are we are still struggling quite a lot with um, uh, with COVID, uh, so we need to be extremely careful. Um, and yeah, I mean it's still a bit difficult. We can't travel, we can't fly out of the country that much. So it's a good time to to think, to work, and to um, to yeah to think about the future. Now, you've, you're coming to uh, the end of the day in Oman because it's it's just gone 7 p.m. there and I'm guessing you've been at work today. Was it a typical sort of day? What does what does the creative experience officer of Amouage do on a typical day at work? Well, I don't, I mean, it has become a bit of a typical day. Uh, it's true. Um, so I spend the day working alone. Um, and it happens. I mean, it's it's very unusual because usually I like to to to, to collaborate with people and to interact with people and so on. Um, I usually travel quite a lot and so on. But here uh, I spend the day in Muscat. Uh, I woke up. I exercised. Um, I went um, to my office at my house. I smelled the dry downs of of uh, the fragrances that uh, I'm currently evaluating. Um, I always try to do that. That's one of the first thing I do in the morning because I want to make sure that they, obviously, that they still smell um, the day after. Um, and then I started working on different topics that we are working on. Um, we are working quite a lot on the website. We are working quite a lot on uh, um, on packaging and, and obviously on fragrances and, and, and ingredients as well. Um, yeah, and I mean, the day has gone and then I, I took my car, I drove to the factory uh, where, the, where I am right now, 
and where the Wi-Fi is there. So hopefully you won't be distracted. <laughs> so you're actually at the Avalanche factory right now? Yeah, I am, I am sitting uh, on top of the place where um, all of the fragrances made in Oman um, are made. So, and what is the smell of the of the room that you're in at the moment? Well, it's it's. A, I mean, right now in in, in my office, um, I've just sprayed um, one of the creations that is going to come out in in fall. Um, but um, yeah, usually it's 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 a bit of a game because we would come in at the factory, and obviously it smells. Um, there is always like a strong scent when you when you get in, and we always try to guess um, what is being produced, and the person who gets it right is um, um, is the winner. So yeah, I mean sometimes it's very obvious. So oh, like this is an interlude day because usually you know if you don't want to take too many risks, like um, we produce interlude quite regularly. It's one of the best sellers. Um, so, so usually that's easy. Now, sometimes with uh, with fragrances that are a bit more difficult to guess, uh, I guess a bit more tricky. So you brought it up yourself, and I'm very, very pleased because I wanted to start with this. We will we will hopefully have enough time to talk a little bit about your background and the journey that brought you to Amouage. But you brought up this guy here, Interlude Black Iris Man. We've got to get this question out of the way because I'm sure lots and lots of people are very curious. You you join the company as a new creative experience officer, you know, person who takes the decides on the creative direction, um, this established brand. So you're here to make your mark and to sort of tell us what the Renault Salmon style is going to be. And you give us a flanker, which is something that the brand has never done before. So what's the truth? Did you actually think, oh, it's going to be quite original and different doing a flanker? Or did you think, Oh my goodness, I've completely run dry. I have no ideas at all. Quick, 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 let's just release something based on a bestseller. What happened there? Yeah, it's a, it's a very good, uh, I mean, it's the question that everyone is um, is um, is asking. I mean, the, the number one question. And 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 I, I think I realized afterwards that, um, that, I mean, what people might think, like, oh, like, okay, now Amouage is, uh, is becoming very commercial, or are they, are they going to do more flankers or things like that? And, and I mean, we need to go back to um, when things started. Um, I started um, working on the brand last summer, um, and, and I officially moved uh, in Muscat in, on the 1st of November. So, um, back at the time, I'm being asked, like, okay, can you create something? Because we need to, we need to get, um, we need to remain top of mind. We need one creation because uh, we cannot stay one full year without uh, without any product news and so on. Um, it's quite important for the brand, you know, to, to to remain top of mind of retailers, of clients, and so on. So, so can, can can we create something quite quickly? And the first thing I said is, well, I wouldn't feel good um, proposing a completely new narrative and coming up with something, um, given the fact that I've not even moved to Muscat yet. I don't know the archive of the brand. I don't know really what, I mean, I need to talk to some people and so on. So, so I, I, I don't feel at ease um, to, to, to put something, something out that is going to be very directional. Um, and that's how it, it came. I, I asked a few questions like, okay, I mean, um, it seems to me like those fragrances are very emblematic of the house for some reason and so on. So, um, can I know a bit more about them and so on? So we started talking with a few people and, and, I, and I got to know a bit better like who were the perfumers behind some of the fragrances. I happened to live in, uh, in New York. Pierre Negrin was living in New York as well, is living in New York. Um, so, so there were a lot, of, um, a lot of positives at like trying to, um, to do something around the interlude. So, so in a way, you were trying to buy some time. Well, I was 
I wanted to I wanted to to propose something that would give some indication about what is going to come um, in the future. Uh, I think you can see in that creation some of the characteristics of what I believe in uh, when it comes to fragrances. So um, like what, for example, specifically? I'm going to spray some now. Um, I mean, I, I, I think that um, perfumery is really about pleasure. Um, I, I don't believe that much in in for uh, in forcing people to go through extremely unpleasant or weird things to discover beautiful things. I prefer to to I would say to 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 tell a story through fragrances that evolves, that is going to be complex and that is really going to to reveal things one after the other. But I but I want people to enjoy it um, as much as possible. And and that's a little bit the starting point of 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 the um, I mean, my personal take on, it's, it's really a personal take on interlude. Um, I felt that it was beautiful. It's a beautiful creation. It, I mean, I mentioned it, it's one of the best sellers of the brand, but I felt that it was very colorful and I felt that it was really loud and that it was screaming a lot. Um, and I loved, I really loved the dry down of it. I love, I, I really loved it. And I was like, okay, I wish the dry down would come faster. Um, I wish all of the spikes of that fragrance would have some type of substance in the middle um, that would soften a little bit the angularity that I was seeing in that fragrance. And, 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 and that when we discussed with Pierre, I mean, it, 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 it felt a little bit like we had the, the, the same feeling about it. Um, so that's how it, it came to life. It was like, okay. Um, this is a little bit my philosophy. I love to work with beautiful materials. I love to, to bring people on a journey of mostly pleasant experiences. Um, and I would love to try to bring that to life on, uh, on, on internet. So does that mean that in future from, from the things that come out, you know, under your tenure, that we should expect perfumes that are more immediately accessible? I, I don't think so. I think um, yeah, I just make the difference between things that are probably a bit too conceptual or weird. Um, I don't think that I think you I heard I heard you say make the difference between things that are too conceptual and weird, is that right? Correct. Was there some delay? Okay, go on. Yeah. So just slightly. Anyway, carry on. Good. So I think, um, yeah, I prefer to to try to avoid things that are a bit too too conceptual and weird. To try to bring um, what I call, you know, always a beautiful patina and always something, some substance. Um, always a, la a layer in, in, in the fragrances that is going to, to act as a, a bit as a, as a glue between the different facets that you reveal and between really like the different, the different elements. And that's, I mean, that's what uh, Interlude Black Air is all about. It's really about bringing together those, those very strong um, um, color points that you see in that fragrance in a way. Is there going to be an interlude Black Iris woman? Um, I mean, it's not the plan. The plan is not, um, I mean, definitely it's not to, to start doing flankers of the best sellers of the brand. So it's, it's, not, um, it's not going to happen, I can tell you. Because obviously um, we launched interlude Black Iris and then I had people saying, oh, uh, when is the flanker coming on reflection, right? <laughs> and um, uh, it's not coming. Uh, it's it's definitely not coming. So the um, I think the philosophy is again it was something that was not too directional. That was um, 
I think, a beautiful piece of work on, on um, it's a technical piece of work on, um, on, on ingredients, uh, on, uh, on interlude. Uh, and I think it, it needs to be seen as a transition, as a creative transition um, before, um, before brand new things come very soon. And we're, we're all holding our breath. Okay, right. Let's go to the past a little bit. In, in the run-up to this interview, uh, those of you watching, I asked uh, Renaud if he could send me just a very, very brief biography of himself, just so that I wouldn't have to ask him lots and lots of very obvious um, factual questions about his background. Now, Renaud, you, you, you very sweetly actually wrote back and said that you didn't have a bio, and so you, you put one together for me, uh, which, which was great to read. So I know from your bio that your birthday is the 21st of March, that you are by birth Belgian, that from you, you're from the French-speaking part of Belgium. You said that you were raised in a small village surrounded by nature and a few cows. Um, your father had the most amazing garden, you say, full of flowers, fruits, perfect playground for kids. You started developing an interest in the world of um, design and fashion when you were 15. And then, and then comes a really, really interesting part in your biography, because this is the bit that I find so interesting in a lot of people's biographies. You did an internship at Delvaux, which you say, and is true, the world's oldest luxury leather goods maker. And then, as if by magic, a few years later, you found yourself being the perfume right-hand person of Domenico Dolce and Stefano Gabbana, of Dolce and Gabbana, Sarah Burton and Alexander McQueen, and Mark Jacobs at Mark Jacobs. So what was the magical fairy dust that was sprinkled on you in, during this period? How do you go from doing an internship to working for these three really quite large, high-profile mainstream brands? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think, I, I mean, I took some, some shortcuts in that biography, but um, uh, I mean, I would, I would qualify that as um, a pretty um, normal career in, um, in, in, in luxury goods and particularly in fragrances. So, I, I mean, I always had, I always had a passion for, uh, for luxury goods, for fashion and, uh, uh, and fragrances as well. Um, but then I, I my my background is uh, I mean I, I I studied engineering and so on so uh, it's a bit of a dual profile and and when I started working in luxury people were a bit puzzled because usually you're either extremely creative or you're more of a commercial and business person um, and and the fact that I that I had a bit of that dual profile i was i was at ease with business person and i was at ease with um with more creative um with more creative people and 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 that type of 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 profile quickly um gave me the opp opportunity to represent um to represent my my function and and the the, the company and so on with um with very very creative people and and I and I, I was going along very well with um, with designers because I had that passion that um, that yeah I think really that passion for uh, for luxury and for fashion and fragrances. Um, where, where did the love of fragrances come from? Do you think? Well, I mean it's. It's curiosity. It's um, curiosity for the world of luxury, and 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 it's yeah. I mean, my, my first meetings really with um, with with fashion people and so on. Everyone was smelling something. Like um, I was meeting with fashion students, and they would smell of patchouli, or they would smell of just like I don't know, very weird scents. They would they would love comme des garçons or something like that. So they would always be very. Um, very linked those memories with uh, with fragrances, um, and then the first important business people I met in luxury, they were always smelling exquisite. Like I remember the um, the the head of human resources at Delvo. Um, I mean, she she was wearing uh, Chanel Coromandel, and and I did not dare to ask what she was wearing. 
until the very last day when my internship finished and, and I, I went to her office and I told her, listen, I need to ask because otherwise I, I will never know. And it's one of those things, you know, I don't, I mean, I don't know if you had that in your life, but sometimes you smell something you don't dare to ask and then you, you, you think about it forever. So, so it doesn't sort of go back particularly to your childhood, apart from your dad's a garden full of beautiful flowers, I suppose. Well, yeah, and, and I think, you know, it's always an, a bit of an easy link to explain that, that you were born with it or that your mother was, obviously, I mean, every single mother is, I guess, you know, smells good in, in, in your memories. Um, but, but I must say that my parents were very traditional, so um, they were very, they had very expected choices when it comes to fragrances. My, my, my father was always wearing very fresh and simple fragrances, and my mother liked very light floral scents, so nothing groundbreaking. Um, but yeah, I think the appeal, and, and, and actually maybe the, the contrast, when I started to engage with people who are really more creative and who, are, who felt more special uh, and more unique, um, in a way, um, I mean, back at that time, I realized that, okay, I was really fascinated about it. And, uh, um, and then I, I really started discovering more and more fragrances. I got into it. Um, I fell in love with some fragrances and so on. And, um, um, and I became curious and I started to explore um, online and so on. And what was, and what, was the most sort of, what was the sort of most daring thing that you decided to wear for yourself when you were younger or something that you, you know, that at the time felt like it was quite daring and unusual for you? So the, um, yeah, w um, one of my first jobs, um, the, 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 the third one actually, um, was working um, in, uh, in fragrances. So that's my first job in fragrances. Uh, and I, I was not creating fragrances. I was, um, I was um, managing a portfolio of fragrances as a, as a what, what they call a junior product manager. Um, and I decided to wear uh, Gucci Pura. So I don't know if you remember it, but the, the brown one created by Michel Almerac, extremely... The Michel Almerac from, from when Tom Ford was... It? Yeah, we've talked about that perfume a lot on this channel, but anyway, go on. Yeah. I mean, when, when, you're, when you're quite young and when you have like a portfolio full of fragrances and, and including, you know, a uh, very recent one from Gucci and so on. So that was back at the time when Frida Giannini was the, the creative director at, um, at Gucci. Um, and, and, and she was going for, um, I would say, what I would describe as easy chipre and so on and all of that. Uh, and you decide to make a statement and you go for the old one from Tom Ford um, that is extremely strong and so on. Um, I think that that was really one of the first um, the, the first daring choices I would say that I that I that I made in a way um, when it comes to to wearing something a bit special. I think I think you've probably just won yourself a lot of fans by name checking that that perfume on this particular channel. There are a lot of fans of that that perfume on this channel. Um, and how does one? become the creative experience officer at time you know are, are you are you sitting on a sunday one day having breakfast and you know having some scrambled eggs and orange juice and going through the paper and going oh look honey there's a there's an um, there's an omani company that's looking for a creative experience officer how does that work i mean yeah it, the, the the fragrance world is quite small um if you if you think about it it's quite small so um yeah, I think the, the house was looking for um, for someone who who could become um, the creative person, so driving the creativity of the brand. But but they went out looking for what they call um, you know I mean a creative or um, um, a, an experience officer in a way. They they really wanted something a bit more than 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 someone extremely artistic and creative. They wanted, I think, someone that who had a bit of um, of an international fragrance experience. So, so they got in touch with a few people. I, I guess my name um, 
came out and uh, and they contacted me. Um, and the first question was like, I mean, you know the brand, and, and I mean, I guess you know, like some people still don't know uh, Amwash that well, um, particularly in um, probably in bigger brands or something like that. And uh, and I told them, of course. I mean, I I, I mean, I consider Amwash as uh, a dream destination, you know, for um, for for any any fragrance lover and. And the way I looked at it is um, when when you work for and when you create for, um, for, 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 for big designers, when you create fragrances, um, you're always walking a very fine line between commerciality and being daring but not too much and then pleasing a lot of people and, and being successful at um, at fragrance tests with consumers and stuff like that and so on. So it's, it, I think it's a very good school because it requires deep knowledge of perfumery and, 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 and you understand really, you know, what a small change makes in, in the fragrance perception. Um, but at the same time, it's, it feels also quite limiting and it can be a bit frustrating. Um, and when they approached me, they told me, well, the, our philosophy is all about, um, it's all about creative freedom. Like we, we, we are not, they are not after, um, the family owning the brand is not after just like, um, I mean, to say it a bit straight, they are not after money first. Um, what they are after, they are fragrance lovers, like they, they, they love perfumery and, and what they want. Uh, and it's something you realize when you arrive in Oman, the, the, the brand is the most famous luxury brand from Oman. So it really represents the country. Um, and it's, it's really, um, it's there to represent the country. So it means that the, the first priority of Amouage is, uh, is to create beautiful creations that are that are en enjoyed internationally and that are really um, admired internationally. So that's what they told me. They told me um, we want we want first beautiful creations. We want to be proud of what the house is going to become, um, and um, and that's why um, that's why we would love you to. To fly to Oman, and so I had never been to Oman, and um, here can I you am remember, today. Can you remember your reaction when you first saw it? You know, either when you got out of the plane or looking down from the plane. Yeah, because I had been several times to to Dubai and 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 to a few countries in the Middle East, never to Oman, because it's it's quite a small fragrance market if you think about it. Um, and and I landed, and and I was I was in shock. Um, because it's very authentic. It has a lot of history. Um, you have mountains, you have fjords, you have um, lush forests, uh, you have beautiful uh, beaches and so on. So it's really, it's really not what I was expecting at all to, to find in, uh, uh, in, in the region. So I, I really fell in love with it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I was not considering moving, moving and um, and actually, yeah, I thought about it twice and I said, okay, I, it, it, it would make sense to, to go there and to, to spend some time, um, quite some time, to really uh, understand what the house is all about uh, and what the Omani philosophy is all about, um, to try to see where to place the cursor between I don't know the east and the west, the the, the tradition and and the international influ influences and, and 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 all of that. And I think it's really a good place to to be for um, um, from that point of view. I'm not surprised to hear you say that because I, I I still haven't come across a single person who has been to Oman and has and has found the experience disappointing. I've I've only ever heard the best things about Oman. Now, those of you watching. 
Start sending in your questions now. Start thinking of questions for Renaud now because we'll, we'll, we'll put them to him. But of course, if you've watched any of these interviews, Renaud, you know that the, you can't have a personalized interview without some kind of a game. So <laughs> don't look too worried, you're fine. Um, so I'm, I'm going to fire some questions at you really, really quickly. You you mustn't think too hard about okay. any answers to these questions. You've just got to come up with the answers. I've got 20 questions here. You are allowed to pass on three questions. So there are you can say three times, you can say, pass, I don't know, I don't want to answer that question. But use your passes wisely, because if you run out of your three too quickly, then... You're just going to have to answer the rest of the questions. Yeah. Are you ready for this? I am. Okay, let's go then. What is your favorite color? Green. Okay. The last good movie that you saw? Uh, it's an animation movie. It's called um, J'ai perdu mon corps. So I've lost my body. It's beautiful. You should watch it if you've not, not seen I've it. I've lost my... J'ai perdu body. mon corps. I lost my... My book. Oh, yeah, I know that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen it. The last good book you read? Um, it's a good question. Um, it's, um, it's, it's, it was actually a book about um, Karl Lagerfeld. It's read, uh, it's, um, the name is Merci Karl. Um, quite interesting. Okay. What's your favorite car? I mean, I either say I don't have a favorite or I say I pass. So you say you don't have a favorite. I'll let you, I'll let you yeah. keep your pass. What is the place in the world that you would most like to visit from the places you haven't been to yet? Japan. Ah, highly recommended. What's the place in the world that surprised you the most when you visited it? Oman. Okay. Who's your favorite fashion designer? It's human. Ah, oh, okay. Favorite writer? Hmm. <laughs> Don't overthink it. Um, uh, bus. Ah, oh, okay. You've had one then. What's the fashion decision that you regret the most? Your personal fashion decision? Um, I somehow can't imagine you making any fashion decisions that you regret, but maybe there is one. No, no, I do. Uh, I bought uh, Balenciaga Triple S sneakers. You know, they are those huge, chunky sneakers, and okay, they are they they are heavy. They they hurt your knees, and and actually, it's bad taste. So now that I look at it, like I'm, I'm, I'm I regret. Fair enough. If my Money were no object, what is the luxury good that you would go out and buy right now? Um, a beautiful watch, I would say. I don't have one. I don't wear watches. Okay. What, what music are you enjoying listening to right now? Right now, um, yeah, um, I would say two things. One is contemporary classical. So things like Max Richter, um, Olafur Arnolds and so on. And, um, and I listen a lot to 90s, uh, 90s, even like, yeah, like techno music sometimes. I okay. like to explore like, uh, alternative musical subcultures cool. and, uh, and right now I'm listening to yeah I mean all of those like very early techno music and so on and electronic you heard it here first people the the Amouage rave perfume is coming next um what do you what do you what do you miss the most about Belgium um good chocolate ah what is the characteristic that most bugs you or annoys you in other people? Um, when people are um, insensitive and they lack empathy. And what is the characteristic that you most wish you could personally have? Um, being a bit more 
um, social, like being, yeah, like I, I yeah, I, I don't find myself like very social, like very, yeah. Interesting. What's your favorite way to relax? Uh, I, I run in the mountains. Oh, nice. You're in a good place for that. What's the most boring part of your job? Doing interviews on YouTube right now, anyway. <laughs> no. Um, no, go on. What is the most boring part of my job? It's probably... Um, I, I, I mean, I like what I'm doing. Um, yeah, sometimes doing presentations. Okay. Uh, it, yeah. It's like designs and things like that. And so I really hate all of that. What's the most fun part of your job? Uh, working with perfumers. So next question, which perfumer would you most like to work with next? Pass. I, uh, lots of them. Okay. What's your favorite advertising campaign like ever? You know, maybe even one that you remember from childhood, like an advertising campaign that really stayed with you. Uh, the Sunny Bravia, uh, the bouncing balls. Um, you you might remember that one was shot in San Francisco, and the ah for the Sony TVs, right? Television. Yeah, yeah, like color, <laughs> like no others, and, and they had all of those bouncy balls. I found it so poetic and and just beautiful, and and yeah, and in fragrances, I would say uh, egoist, like the one um, with the windows. For Chanel Egoist opening with the, yeah with the the music I think the Montagues and the Capulets music I think and finally you've made it to the last one what is the biggest gap in Amouage's lineup of perfumes? Huh. Um. <laughs> this is when I could be very kind to you and tell you that you have one pass left, but um, I know, but I would love to answer because. Okay. Um, that might be interesting. Um, let me think about it. No, I don't know. I'm going to pass for now. I mean, I'm, I'm exploring like a few things, but yeah, it's it's not that obvious, I think. We should do some questions from these people who have been very, very, very patiently uh, watching and reading. If you are leaving a question, if you would like to also say where you are uh, watching from, because it's always fun to find out where all of you um, are based. Uh, we've had lots of hellos. We've had hellos from Paris. We've had Shimon saying hello from a rainy Warsaw. Uh, Shimon's asking for a tour of the factory. Maybe, maybe another time we could do a factory. So Aperol Spritz here has been intrigued by the fact that you referred to a release coming in the fall because they're saying here, I didn't expect there were going to be any more releases in 2020. But is the Amouage release schedule carrying on then? We are, you, you, you yes. sort of haven't stopped there. So um, let me, um, let me tell you what is going to come a little bit. Oh. Um, yeah. So the, the one that is coming very soon uh, is um, Overture Woman. Um, over, over to your woman, okay, because there's over to your man over there. In the, okay, right. So this is an interesting one because um, Christopher had finalized most of, most of it before leaving. Um, so it's, it's always tricky, I would say, to take over um, a, a project that is 90% um, finalized. Um, and I reopened a few things, um, but I kept also some of it. Um, I did not understand the fragrance, so I changed the fragrance. Um, and but I think it's beautiful. Um, the fragrance uh, I, I worked on the fragrance with uh, Anik Menardo. Um, oh wow! Yeah, it's 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 out there that fragrance. Like it's it's I I felt like um, I love Overture Man. Uh, I find it beautiful, and it's really one of those fragrances that to me goes back a bit to those to those beautiful signatures um, mm. that I you know that I associate a bit more with the, the if that makes sense with the what Christopher had been doing at, more at the beginning um, in a way or some classics of the brand as well.
So, so just to be clear, is Overture Woman a completely new project from scratch? So the original no. perfumer was not Annick Menardo, or you? No, the original you, perfumer you tried. was Annick Menardo. No, okay. Christopher had worked on, on packaging. Uh, he had worked on, I mean, on all of the aspects of the fragrance, not only the, the, the juice. Um, I kept the, the packaging because I find it beautiful and, um, uh, and, and the bottle as well and so on. Um, but the juice, um, I mean, I, I just did not understand the juice. Uh, okay. it, it, so, so I, 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 I mean, it, I felt like, okay, if I want to, to, to stand behind what is going to come, um, I feel like I need to, to start with, uh, with something new from that point of view. So that's, um, what we worked on with Anik. Um, and, and, and the men's one being quite, quite a beautiful and powerful signature, I felt like I needed um, a creation from a perfumer who has like this capacity to do something very, uh, quite a statement. Um, yeah. Now, I have to ask you this one because I've seen at least three people ask this and I know, I'm sure you've been asked this already. So I'm going for this one from Evo, even though other people have asked. Hello from Craig, Shea says Evo. Are you planning to bring back the attars, for example, homage and tribute for the European market for the for the two people out there in the world who don't know the the um amouage atars you can only now officially get in Oman right but lots and lots of people want to know if they're going to be made more available what's the answer so the answer is we are trying to because there is demand it's clear there is demand for them um we have clients um sending us messages on social media, emails and so on, but also retailers would love to have the authors. Now, the, the reality is that the authors, um, the, the authors are not IFRA compliant. So um, they are not, um, we are not allowed to export them outside of Oman. Um, and Oman is, uh, I mean, it's our home, home market and it's slightly different from that point of view. Um, now, from there, well, you can either say, well, they, they will remain exclusive to Oman and you need to take a trip to Oman to, to, to buy them or buy them through um, someone who's reselling the others. Or uh, we can try to find a way to, to make them compliant. And, and that's what we are looking at right now. Now, the risk is obviously that um, uh, we might lose the character. I've not smelled yet an IFRA compliant version of um, tribute, for example. So I don't know, um, but, um, and, and yeah, I mean, that one is a blend, but I'm, I doubt even more when it comes to pure ingredients like Rosta if and so on, because I mean, it's going to be very tricky. It's not going to be a ingredient anymore. And so, on. Um, so, so we need to see, we need to smell. Uh, and I think that if it's not if it's not good and if it's not credible in terms of approach, um, it's not going to happen. If it's if it makes sense and if the products are beautiful and if blind we cannot tell the difference between um, um, I would say an Oman attar and an international attar, um, then it's something we might consider. And then the last option could be to say, well, the range is going to remain exclusive in Oman, and then maybe can try to create attars that are compliant since the very beginning, and that will be distributed uh, internationally. Okay. Benjamin Doughty has been sending in lots and lots of questions, so I have to take at least a few of his. Um, uh, will any men's extra perfumes become a reality? Again, those of you who know the brand will be aware that the pattern that we had fallen into was that when we had the man's release and the woman's release, usually after a year, we got the extra version of the woman's release, but never really an extra of the men's. So mm -hmm. Benjamin would like to know if that's something that might happen. So that's something I'm, um, I'm, I'm evaluating, I would say, because indeed um, there is um, clearly, I mean, we, it's not the first time that, uh, that people are asking the question and so on. And, and I don't see why, you know, I don't see why there would be extra for women and, and, and not for men. Um, I, 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 I quite like the fact that there is a strong 
uh, parity on the brand. Like the, the, the men's and women's fragrances are all in, uh, in eau de parfum concentration. They are at the same price, it's not like women's fragrances are more expensive than men's or something like that, same formats and all of that. So, so uh, I mean, I wish, wish we could uh, keep that parity as well when it comes to the, uh, the extra. Um, it requires a bit of work. Um, and uh, it, because, I mean, the way you make an extra, you can decide just to dial up the concentration and, and that's a way to, to, to make an extra. Or you might say, well, actually, I want to reformulate and I want to, to, to rebalance the ingredients um, for different reasons. Um, so, so right now, I'm evaluating the two, the two directions on, on some of the, some of the men's fragrances. And speaking of parity and patterns, should we expect the releases, at least of the main line, to carry on how they have been? So should we expect that every year there's going to be, a, you know, something man, something woman, as we yeah. have done, is, is that going to carry on? Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, no, I'm, 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 I've been thinking a lot about the approach um, of Christopher. Like I, he was working on, on men's and women's fragrances in, in a way that it was quite disconnected. Like there, there was clearly like um, a, a clear direction for the men's one, a clear direction for the women's one. But conceptually, you know, they, they belonged to the same universe and so on. And I, I, I don't know yet the answer. I don't know if I want to try to bring olfactively a little bit of the same concept to life um, with men or women, or if, if we want to, um, to do things that are obviously very different. So that's still something that I want to, 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 to make my mind about. For example, for Overture, um, I felt like I wanted to, to bring that um, that richness and that booziness in a way to, to to the woman's fragrance, and that's the probably the main thing that I was not finding in uh, in, in in what was before in that bottle in, in that woman. So that's why I went for something that 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 I felt at least in my mind connected with the men's one a bit better. You've, you've referred to the past quite a few times, which obviously is inevitable. You, you've, you've only been at the brand for about a year for, or maybe less than a year. And it's also a very, very beloved brand by people who are really, really interested in what it's releasing and hoping that each release is going to be you know, wonderful and fantastic. And, and there was also a lot of affection, as you know, for Christopher Chong, the, crea the uh, previous creative director. Do you kind of feel that pressure, the weight of well, what came before, or do you just have to Put it aside when you go to work because if you didn't put it aside it would just be too oppressive what's your view on all that no i mean definitely um the day i the day i started the day i arrived um i could feel i could feel the the love you know for uh, for for christopher because i mean he did he did amazing things um and i think people love his, his personality and 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 the fact that he was really, he, he would never compromise on his vision and, and um, I mean, on, on quality and things like that and so on. So um, clearly there are big expectations. Um, I feel that more than any, um, more than any other uh, brand, like the, it's obvious that the role of the creative person uh, is extremely important at um, at Amouage because again, I mean, Christopher had such an impact. Um, so, so that's definitely. I mean, it's part of the past of the brand. Um, I'm not there to hide it because I think it should just be. Uh, I mean, it needs to be embraced. It's part, really part of the history of the brand, and uh, um, and 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 the creations are there to stay. You know, like, there is no reason why 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 I would want to kill, I mean, everything that has been done that is that is beautiful. So more questions from people watching Olfactive Stories and a few other people as well have said, what's your favorite Amouage fragrance? Oh. So Louise, um, the, one of the questions that, that comes back regularly as well, um, I mean, there are lots of them and I wish I could wear them a bit more. Um, right now I like, um, I like 
I mean, I enjoy two of them. I like Epic Woman. Um, I find it beautiful. Um, and yeah, uh, I've been enjoying it quite a lot recently. Um, I like uh, Beach Hut Man as well. Um, yeah, when I when I want something fresh, but it, I mean, it's, it's it's a fresh fragrance, but it's very 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 unique, I think. Um, so so I, I I like it quite a lot. Yeah, Tribulation Twenty Five as well. Lots of them. Which one though? <laughs> Twenty Five with the which with which oh. numerals? <laughs> the men's one. I, I like the men. Okay. Do you foresee a time when Amouage fragrances will all be marketed as unisex and not for men and women? I mean, that, 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 that's my philosophy, you know? The, my philosophy is that um, fragrances are not gendered. Um, and, and in a way, um, I mean, the, yeah, it's it's important to, to to I think to push people to experiment and to try things, um, because because then you discover beautiful things. Like if I if I had been stuck at oh, epic woman is for woman, so I'm not going to wear it. I mean, I would not I would not know that beautiful creation. But at the same time, um, for some reason, I realized that what I've been seeing and I've been talking to people and so on, it just feels like, okay, there is, there is a pattern, there is a rhythm that has been established and people know that they can, um, they can go actually for, for, for the other gender, um, fragrance and so on. So I, I think the brand is already very complex in a way. So what I want to do is I want to bring you things, but I want to avoid creating too much complexity and, um, um, and, and, and breaking like too much the brand architecture as well in a way. So, so that's something we still need to, 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 to consider carefully in the future. But I think for now, um, we are going to be working on, um, duos of fragrances. So one man and one woman fragrances, the same way it has been done in the past. And then I think we are going to explore, um, different concepts, maybe more in the spirit of collections and, and, and maybe something that is a bit less, uh, less gendered. So that ties in. We've got one person, by the way, at least one person agreeing with you here. Aperol Sprit says Epic Woman is a masterpiece. And that the, what you just said now ties in with a question we've got here from another question from Benjamin. He's saying, will the It's All About series be continued? So we had Rose Incense, and um, so I, I guess maybe you could just give it, give us a sort of yes or no. Is that series going to continue? Is the library connection the collection going to continue? Is the 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 the, the garden uh, collection going to continue? Or are those have those had a sort of line drawn under them for the moment? Um, lots of questions. I, it's all about. Um, for now, I'm not working on a new one uh, in in that series. Um, and I just it's, it's all about right. Okay. Um, I, I, I just feel that the, 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 the only, I mean, it's a beautiful creation, uh, Rose Incense. It's, it's really beautiful. I just feel that the name to me is not very amouage in the sense that it's a bit too ingredients and descriptive. And I, and I, in my mind, uh, amouage is all about bringing strong stories and concepts to life and so on. And, 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 and this does not leave um, that much in the name Rose Incense. Um, the library collection, um, I'm, I'm, right now I'm not working on, um, on new fragrances on the, in the library collection. Um, the same for Secret Garden and uh, the Midnight Flower collection. Um, the main collection, definitely. Uh, this is like the, the backbone of the brand and it makes total sense to keep on, on working on it. Um, and then maybe trying to Trying to bring something new and different next to it. Um, the, just, somebody's asking whether you live in Oman at the moment because I think they didn't see the beginning of the broadcast. So, so yes, Renault is now, is now based uh, in, in 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 Muscat in Oman. And um, we're, we're almost at the end of our time. Thank you very much, everybody, for asking questions. Uh, thank you, uh, Renault, for you know giving up your time and for helping to make this hundredth episode of Love at First Scent very very special. 
Um, what's the main thing that you would like to achieve at the brand in the next sort of 12 months? You know, what would you like to be able to look back on and say, yes, you know, I'm really, really glad I managed to do this one thing. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I think um, I want to to create um, uh, beautiful new creations that are, uh, I mean, they are going to come out in fall. So, so. And I and I, I wish that they would be extremely well received and that people would like the um, um, the new the new direction that the house is taking, which is not a complete brand. I mean, it's not a complete brand reboot. It's not going to change um, dramatically. I think I'm going after what makes the brand beautiful and enjoyable. After the beautiful patina. After. Um, the the strength uh, and 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 the power um, of of the juices, but in a way that is um, that is tasteful. So with some fragility, with beautiful ingredients, and not only by just like using the most powerful molecules. Um, and and yeah, bringing back a little bit the brand to its roots, but still keeping a lot of the. Um, the international influences, uh, and and I so think yeah, yeah. So, overture woman, but also another duo, or just overture woman you're talking about for the fall. Overture woman is coming very soon, um, next month, and um, and then in and is fall, that going to be exclusive again? I believe overture man was Harrods, right? Correct. So it's going to be exclusive uh, at Harrods for some time. Overture man okay. is the, the distribution is is now expanding a bit broader. Um, and and then in fall, so you can expect several new creations that are uh, that are part of a new chapter of the brand. Excellent. And then hopefully, if this experience hasn't been too painful, you'll be able to come back and and talk to us more about them uh, because I'm sure there are going to be hundreds and hundreds of people out there waiting to find out what what they're going to be. Uh, Renaud, seriously, thank you very much for your time. Can't thank you enough. Just for anybody out there who isn't aware of this. The people that I interview do not know in advance what the questions are going to be. So thank you very much for being such a good sport and, and, and answering every single question that was thrown your way. And to everybody else, thank you once again for helping me to get to this amazing milestone. There is another interview coming on Friday uh, on the YouTube channel, but um, I will update the social media channels in a little while to tell you who that interview is going to be with. But another very interesting one coming your way. Until then, take care, folks. And would you like to just say one final word of goodbye to everybody? I haven't given you a chance to say goodbye, Renaud. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Uh, and I hope that you that you will enjoy everything. Don't hesitate to comment, um, to send us messages and so on. We we read them. Uh, and, and I think we try to, to, to answer as much as possible. And, and, um, and it's helping us a lot. Brilliant. Thanks very much, everyone. Take care.